Good morning, folks. We've got some significant updates to hit today. We're going to look at a large plasma filament. The earthquakes watched yet another geomagnetic storm crop up as coronal holes were set to face Earth. We can see two planets on SOHO coronagraphs, and we've got news from the climate to Pluto, capping off with some weather as well. All while the Earth-facing solar quiet remains dominant, sunspots unable to produce, including the big boy from last month. But let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find that calm star with the dark coronal holes now exiting center disk. The primary eruption threat is north of that. The thin, dark plasma filament with a trailing portion still coming over the limb and jumping around a bit. It is set up to snap top left to bottom right if it does so today. As I mentioned before, the Earth-facing solar quiet effect remains dominant. No solar flares to speak of, and that's with last month's M6 flare maker on the disk. It is actually the undeveloped umbral patch out ahead that contains a hint of magnetic mixing. Lacks the umbral power, though, and the bigger spot is all red negative. No magnetic mixing. Solar wind here. The coronal hole facing us right now had one out ahead of them, you might remember. Well, its stream of solar wind hit Earth just as we were waiting for the energetic disruptions to begin affecting the ground. They disrupted the magnetosphere instead. Level 3 event detected at Karuna. That means we saw a geomagnetic storm during the first coronal hole. Nothing as the gap between them came. As the second double opening came in, it began to merge and really fade in power. And when the strongest portion of this second one faced Earth, we got another geomagnetic storm. That is some lucky timing to take energy away from earthquakes. A look alive, we're at Soho Lasco Coronagraphs. And if you remember our transit of Mercury update, you know this little guy coming in right here is the innermost planet. Not so bright because we're mostly seeing its backside. But over to the right, it appears something tremendously bright is coming in. Well, that is Venus. It looks so bright because it is on the further side of the sun, presenting nearly all of its lit side to Earth, as opposed to the waning crescent of Mercury as it comes between Earth and Sun. The April climate report for the USA is out, and there's no shock to see high rain totals up and down the middle of the country there. When we look to the temperatures, again, it's a mix of hot, very hot, and very cold. Interestingly, the minimum temperature chart shows vastly greater variability than the daily max charts. East seems to get frigid at night, but comes back up nicely during the day, while Washington is kind of hot in the day and can't shake it when the night comes. Of course, the Canadian wildfire is not getting much better. The blaze is expected to grow on the heels of fast winds expected today. NASA has made available dozens of their patents for open public use. That's the type of thing that sees a surge in commercial use and progress within about a year. We've got a very cool Pluto update from David McComas. We've known that name since our 2011 IBEX reports. He now has data from the instrument he put on New Horizons and says Pluto acts somewhere in between a comet and a planet. Tonight in the U.S. it's going to be a bit lighter, but by tomorrow we see severe weather threats returning to the United States off a huge low that develops atop and west of the Rockies and which will deliver its convergence in bad weather starting before sunset tomorrow. Across the pond, the earth spot cresting Portugalia, España is the largest meteorological concern for Europe today. And last but not least, down under, we see one of those Antarctic cells detached and now fully spinning up a storm system as it moves across Australia. It is Saturday, folks, so members of Suspicious Observers, you'll get your weekly podcast here in a couple hours, going back to the old posting method this week. Lots of good topics coming, and we expect to eclipse 150 hours of fly on the wall today. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.